Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's edition of The Porch. And I'll give everyone a few minutes to gather together on these different platforms, including uh, Clubhouse and, of course, make sure I have my thing on Clubhouse straight. Okay, Clubhouse and uh, Facebook Live as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming on and being a part uh, of this morning's uh, broadcast. We're getting ready to close out the month of October, getting ready to go into a new month, the last, the second last month of 2023. Can you imagine how quickly this year has gone? And we're getting ready for 2024 in just two months. It's been an amazing, amazing year of of gathering and fellowshipping, and, and, and God has done some amazing things uh, in us and through us. And I want to thank all of those that have been a part of uh, the porch. We get our title from Solomon's Porch, where the early believers met uh, on the day of Pentecost. Uh, and Not on the day of Pentecost, they met in the upper room. But throughout the early chapters of the book of Acts, the early believers met in Solomon's Porch and prayed and fellowshiped and, and gathered together. And God did some amazing things among them. And we believe that as we come together on these different social media platforms that will experience the same manifestations of God's blessing and favor and grace. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I do want to welcome, especially in Clubhouse, those that are coming from the previous rooms, Kingdom Citizens United, Prophetic Intercession, Decrease for Breakthrough, and the Assignment Room, as well as all the members of Crusaders Church, Impact University, and of course those that are joining me here on Facebook Live. I do want to thank all of those who came uh, to the sound gathering in San Bernardino, California. Had a great time there with evangelist Karen Gates and also with Sandy Norman and Dr. Lanice. They were all there in San Bernardino. That was Friday evening and Saturday during the day. And then Sunday morning at All Nations Worship Assembly with Dr. Matthew Stevenson had a great, great time with them. I thank you for your hospitality and and a, a great message. I'm going to actually share some of the message I preached there yesterday because it, it, it's, I've been preaching this message for a while and I revisit it and it, it, it really stirs me up because I think it's such an important thing to understand. You know, Proverbs 4, 7 says, Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. With all thy getting, get understanding. Understanding is one of the most important things that you can have in your life. To understand the things of God, the times, the season. Scripture says that the children of Issachar had understanding of the times to know what Israel should do. Understanding the time is very important because you know what to do when you understand the time. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 says... There's a time and season for everything. And when you understand that time, understanding, which is connected to wisdom, it gives you the ability to navigate, to live in that particular season and to do it correctly. So we believe in wisdom, understanding, knowledge. And so I'm going to talk about a subject and it's called the world is always ending. And I'll explain what I mean by that. The world is always ending. And hopefully you'll You'll be encouraged. You'll be blessed by today's teaching. Uh, before I start, I do want to remind all of those that are viewing that we're beginning a new series with our master class, and that will begin tomorrow evening, Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. And this new series is on witchcraft and the occult. Witchcraft and, and occult involvement can open you up to demons. And there's a whole realm of, of demons that operate through witchcraft and occult activities. And we're going to be talking about that, uh, giving people the ability to not only receive deliverance, renouncing things, praying, but also being able to minister to people who've been exposed to witchcraft and the occult. And if you want to be a part of this new series, it's by registration. And you can go to jebiblestudy.com and register. It'll be a series, probably three or four um, series that will uh, teachings that will be involved in this master class, and again um, in Clubhouse, you can click on the link. You'll see the the website 
jebiblestudy.com. Very easy to register. And of course, through your email, we'll send you the link. You can watch it either live or watch the replay beginning tomorrow evening, October 31st at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Witchcraft in the Occult Part 1. Okay, again, jebiblestudy.com. Uh, this book talks something, some about uh, witchcraft in the occult. It's called the Deliverance and Spiritual Warfare Manual because this is an area that every deliverance minister and deliverance worker needs to understand how to deal with things or demons that come into the lives of people through occult involvement. It's one of the, it's one of the most dangerous things you can do spiritually. God forgives. Um, you can come out of it, but you'll probably need deliverance if you've been exposed uh, to it. So take advantage of that and be a part of the new series that we'll be doing beginning tomorrow evening, Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Also, we're getting ready to go into a new month, the 11th month, um, and just uh, it'll begin Wednesday. And so if you want to uh, partner with me financially, we have many monthly partners that join me in what I'm doing around the world in our missions projects, um, our clinic projects, our water projects. And if you want to be a part of that, or you just want to sow a seed into what I'm doing and you're blessed by the ministry of the teaching, then I encourage you to go to the giving addresses that we posted. And that is uh, Cash App at JE Global, which stands for John Eckhart Global and PayPal at Apostle JE, the number one. Again, Cash App JE Global and PayPal at Apostle JE, the number one. You can also Zell at E C K H J O H N at gmail.com. And um, as you do that, either now or you know, as we come into the new month, I always decree favor, grace, blessing, prosperity, abundance, multiplication over everyone that is sowing and partnering with this ministry. And I thank you for doing that. And I also decree Deuteronomy 111 that the Lord would increase you a thousand times more. Proverbs 13, 22, the blessing of the Lord would make rich and add no sorrow. Proverbs, that's Proverbs 10, 22. Proverbs 13, 22, that you'll leave an inheritance for your children's children and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for you. Uh, 2 Corinthians 9, 8, God is able to make all grace or favor abound toward you, that you having all sufficiency and all things may abound to every good work. Uh, I decree Psalms 1, whatever you do, let it prosper. Let you be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Psalms 23, let your head be anointed with oil. May your cup run over. Also, Psalms 92 and 10, may you be anointed with fresh oil. May there be a fresh anointing on you for wealth and prosperity. Psalms 35, may God take pleasure in your prosperity. Psalms 37, may you be satisfied in the days of famine. Psalms 66 and 12, may you come into a wealthy place. Psalms 102, verse 3, 112, I'm sorry, Psalms 112, verse 3, may wealth and riches be in your house. I decree Isaiah 48, 17, may the Lord teach you to profit and lead you by the way that you should go. Isaiah 54 and 3, may you break forth on the right hand and on the left. I decree Ephesians 3, 20. May God do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask or think. And Philippians 4, 19, may God supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I pray that through humility and the fear of the Lord, riches, honor, and life would be your portion. Proverbs 22 and verse number 4. Thank you, Lord, for doing new things. Isaiah 42 and 9, Isaiah 43, 19. In their finances, their businesses, their accounts, Thank you. The windows of heaven, the floodgates of heaven are open. Uh, Malachi 3 and 10. Thank you, Lord, for doing great things for them as they sow and partner with me in this ministry. I bless you. I speak restoration. I speak double over your life. Uh, and I speak uh, favor, grace, and quantum, quantum release over your life. And I, I bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. When I talk about the double, this book comes to mind, You Shall Recover All. It talks about receiving the double. God said, I'll give you double for your shame. Double is a number that speaks of restoration. 
you shall recover all. God told David, pursue, overtake, and surely you shall recover all. This is a good book for those who feel as if you need restoration, recovery. Uh, so take advantage of that book. I'll be showing some of my, the books that I usually don't show as we kind of close out the year and get into the holidays and encourage you uh, to get these books. One of my favorites is called The Good Land. It's a it's a it's a, a, a just a pocket book, but it, it's loaded with confessions, decrees and teaching on how to enter into the fullness of what God has for you, your inheritance in Christ. You can go to Amazon.com, type in my name, John Eckhart Books, or ChristianBook.com, type in my name. You see all my books come up. We have electronic books as well, as well as books in Spanish. All of these books are also in, in Spanish if you need books in, his, in, in, in Spanish. Uh, thank you so much. We have a new book coming out in the month of November called How to Activate Favor. It's another prayer book. And as soon as I get a copy of that, I'm going to make sure that I, I, I promote it because favor is one of my favorite subjects. Favorite favor. I love those words. Favor. When men, God or man, um, use their resources, their ability, uh, their strength, their power, their might to bless you. That's one of the definitions of favor. So let's um, believe God for it. Uh, including including as you give, favor is released. 2 Corinthians 9, 8. So as you give and as you sow, favor is released. You'll operate in more favor. Giving is one of the ways that you can actually activate favor in your life. So again, go to those giving addresses. Cash App JE Global. PayPal at Apostle JE, the number one. So you see today, thank you so much for your giving and your support of this ministry. Now, Dr. Pat Francis, who is one of the, uh, the missionaries that I support, is presently in South Africa. And um, as soon as she comes back, I, I've been in communication with her about the work that, that we're doing in South Africa along with her. She's really doing most of the work. We're, we're helping her somewhat financially in her eco village and what she's doing there um, with water projects and street children and um, providing homes. Um, it's amazing. She's also over the water projects that we're doing primarily in Liberia and the clinic project, two of them now in Liberia. So thank you so much for your support. I really, really do appreciate it. I decree Psalms 41 verses 1 through 3, the blessings that come upon those who remember the poor. Read Psalms 41 verses 1 through 3. There's some amazing promises. God said, I'll deliver you in time of trouble. I'll preserve you. I'll keep you alive. Those are some of the blessings that come from ministering to the poor. Remember Psalms 112, verse 3, wealth and riches are in his house, the man who fears the Lord. But also Psalms 112, verse 9, he has dispersed. He has, he has dispersed abroad. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endureth forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. So that's a manifestation of righteousness. Okay. Um, the title of today is The World is Always Ending. Now, uh, Ephesians 3.21 is a very interesting verse of scripture. Ephesians 3.21. Um, and it says this. Unto him be glory in the church uh, by, by Christ Jesus unto all, from, from, unto all ages or from generation to generation, world without end world without end it's a phrase that is also mentioned in isaiah 44 world without end now usually we don't hear this preach much in the church we hear the end talked about much because matthew 24 jesus said this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world as a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come so we often hear about the end <laughs> And many people think that's the, the end of the world, but it's, it's really the end of the age. Um, when you talk about the end, Jesus was specifically talking about the end of the old covenant age, the end of that age or the end of that world that came with the destruction of the temple, the destruction of the fulfillment of the old covenant age. The end did come. Now, you may say, well, the gospel wasn't preached. It hasn't been preached in all the world as a witness, but I encourage you to read Colossians chapter 1, where Paul said the gospel was preached to every creature under heaven. 
and also Romans chapter 10, when Paul is talking about the preaching of the gospel, he says, they, he said, have not their words gone into all the world, their words to the end of the earth. He actually quotes Psalms 19, which says their line has gone through all the, the world and their words to the end of the earth. He said, have they not all heard? He says, surely, truly, this is Romans 10. Their words went out to the end of the earth. Uh, Jesus is really talking about the nations of that world, the Roman Empire, the gospel going to all the nations of the Roman Empire, and then the end would come. The old covenant would, would be fulfilled. Destruction would come upon the temple system, and the end of that age, the end of that age would come. Now, some people have put that at the end of the Christian age, 2,000 years removed from the context, but it's really the end of that age. And then Paul said, world without end, or generation to generation, or from age to age. Now, I have a message called the world is always ending. And when I say that, I, I don't mean the physical planet coming to an end. I simply mean an age coming to an end. And there have been many ages or many generations since Christ that have come to an end. And I can, you can look at history and you can see worlds ending. At least the world that people were once living in is no longer existent. Uh, you can go before that. The world of Noah came to an end. And Noah came out of the ark into a new world. Um, you can look at Israel coming out of Egypt. That world of slavery, 400 years in slavery, came to an end. And they came out. And God brought them into the promised land. You can, you can look at Israel going into captivity. Their world came to an end. And they were taken to Babylon. So that old world, it came to an end. That age, it ended. You can look at history just recently. Well, look at the Civil War in America. The, the slavery, the, the physical part of slavery actually came to an end with, with um, the Civil War. That world before slavery ended. Now, it doesn't mean that there weren't effects afterward, but it's a completely different world. And we have Juneteenth as a, a day that we mark as the end, official end of slavery, even though um, Abraham Lincoln did the Emancipation Proclamation. You look at World War I, you know, the, the, the world at, before World War I came to an end after World War I. It was a completely different world after World War I. There's a movie I encourage you to watch. It's called All Quiet on the Western Front. It's a war movie. It's an amazing picture. And uh, because many people don't know the horrors of World War I. We know more about World War II. But World War I was a very violent, horrible war. And that movie really describes, even from the German perspective, the horrors of World War I. It's called All Quiet on the Western Front. I believe it was nominated for an Academy Award, I believe, last year. Amazing picture. Then World War II. That was about 20 years later. Another world war came. World War I ended, I believe, in 1917. And, and then World War II began in, what, 1939, 1940. We got into it in 1941, America. And um, there was a pre-World War II. After World War II, the world had completely changed and shifted. And so the world is always ending. You know, we, we look at, for instance, the, the world that I got saved in. I made some I made some kind of lighthearted remarks on Facebook Live that when I got saved, I got saved in 19, um, 1978. Uh, we were still using uh, mostly paper Bibles. Now we use electronic Bibles usually. People still use paper Bibles. But I remember my first Bible was a, a Thompson uh, a, a Thompson chain reference study Bible which many people don't even use today. Excellent study Bible. We use paper concordances, Strong's Concordance, Cruden's Concordance. We didn't have any Google. We didn't have any internet. Um, uh, we didn't have this kind of technology that I'm using today to reach you around the world. There was no Facebook Live. There was no social media platform. It was a completely different world. There were no smartphones. And th then we come to... Uh, where we're living now, we're living in a post-COVID world. COVID came. The whole world has changed as a result of COVID when that pandemic came. 
And so we see that the world is always ending in a sense that an age comes to an end. It doesn't mean the physical world comes to an end. The reason I say this is because now you have war in the Middle East and, and all the prophecy teachers will begin to say it's the end. You know, this is another sign of the end. Well, there's, there's been wars before. There's World War I, World War II. The wars we've been involved in recently don't even, they pale in comparison to the millions of people that died in the first two world wars. Uh, even the Vietnam War, the Korean War, the, the Iraq War, whatever wars you deal with, nothing can compare recently with what took place in World War I. Even the pandemic uh, was nothing compared to the Black Death or the bubonic plague that killed millions of people in, during the Middle Ages, hundreds of years ago, the numbers of people that died from the plague. And so even though many people did die from the pandemic, it was nothing uh, compared. It wasn't even, uh, it wasn't even as, as, as bad as the Spanish flu epidemic of 1919. It's good to study history. I love history because it really gives you a perspective of ages and worlds so that when things begin to happen, where it looks like the world is coming to an end and people are afraid and panicking and saying, oh my God, it's coming to an end you really realize it is coming to an end, but it's not the physical planet as we think. It is the age that you previously existed in. Now, the good news is that every time the world ends, a new world begins or new opportunities come and new things happen. Um, something ends, but something begins. This verse, Ephesians 3.21, if you read it in the different translations, when it says world without end, the Spanish translation, I believe, says uh, from age to age or from generation to generation. So really Paul is talking about ages and generations from age to age. Now one thing is, is constant here. Under him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus. What remains constant throughout all these ages from, from the day of Pentecost until now is the church. The church always exists throughout every age. And God always has glory in his church. He always has a glorious church. Now, that doesn't mean that every local church is full of glory. But you should find a church that has glory in presence. The presence of God, the glory of God. That is the constant. The word glory means favor, prosperity, promotion, wealth. Uh, it is an amazing subject, power, strength, might. When you come into contact with the glory of God. Whenever I go minister or, and in our local church, I always look for the glory of God. It's the glory here. People say, well, what kind of church do I, I, I attend? Well, you should go to a church where there's a presence of God. There's power. There's glory. There's might. There's deliverance. There's miracles. There, there's the glory of God. I, I wouldn't attend a church where there's no glory, no presence. You don't, there's, you don't sense any presence. You don't discern any presence. Unto him be glory in the church. Ephesians 3.21. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all generations world without end or from age to age. The church consistently goes even through the pandemic. The church is still here. The enemy wants to always try to destroy the church, but the church will always be here. It is eternal. It's from generation to generation. You can't destroy the church. The church is the people of God. And you can't eliminate that. If God before us, who can be against us? You cannot eliminate what God has blessed. Man cannot curse. So you can hate on the church, talk about the church, curse the church, try to eliminate the church. Many have tried to do it. Previous generations, persecution, Fox's Book of Martyrs, uh, ki actually physically killing Christians in Europe. Uh, it, it is all taking place, but the church is still here. Revival still breaks out. In different places, the kingdom is always expanding. Isaiah 9 and 7, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. There's no end in, in to the increase of God's government, God's rule, God's kingdom, and God's peace, God's shalom. It always, it's always expanding. Now, it may not, your local church may not be growing, or maybe the churches in your region are not growing, but I guarantee you somewhere in the world, there is revival. I always, like one of, one of the things I do every year is I type in, Google now, evangelical hotspots, evangelical hotspots. I try to find out which parts of the world are experiencing the greatest revival. You go to places in Africa, 
You go to places in China, Brazil, there's amazing, amazing church growth and, and revivals breaking out in some place because the, the kingdom is always increasing. There, there's some cities where there's a, the churches are growing. There's a move of God. There's revival. Other places, it looks like the church is declining. But the church is not limited to a one geographical place. The kingdom is not geographical. It is spiritual. It is not located in just one ge ge uh, geographical area. It is worldwide. And there are people in different parts of the world that are moving in the things of the spirit that you may not even know about unless you study it out. For years, I would travel. I would actually get on planes and fly. Uh, in the 90s, I went to Korea because that was at that time the evangelical hotspot. The church was growing in Korea faster than any other place. Uh, and then I went to Argentina. There was revival in Argentina. I went there. I wouldn't just be in that midst because it was the church was experiencing such great revival. And um, today, China, uh, uh, Nigeria, um, parts of, of Africa, uh, Brazil, uh, these places are experiencing great moves of God. The churches of 20, 30, 50, 100,000, even more than that, people gathering, praying, worshiping God. Other places, you may not even get 10 people to come into a building. But, but God is not limited to a geographical area. It's always expanding. And, and there's glory in the church, a world without end. The world doesn't have an end. It goes from generation to generation. Um, the age is in. Uh, generations in, but but Ecclesiastes said the earth abides forever. That's in the book of Ecclesiastes. So don't get all fearful when you see wars break out. You know what's happening in the Middle East, uh, and all the prophecies Jesus come up saying, "Oh, it's a sign. It's coming to an end. Get ready. Everything's going to end." Uh, they've said that for years. You can get all these old books. I remember they wrote a book called "88 Reasons Why the Rapture Will Occur in 1988." Well. They gave 88 reasons in this book and nothing happened in 1988. Y2K came and many of them said it's going to end. Nothing ended. The, the, blue, the, red, the blood moons came. Nothing ended. Stop falling for all this teaching that's not scriptural and get a revelation of kingdom and from generation to generation. I believe God for revival. I believe God for glory. I know there are problems on the earth, but I'm a kingdom man. You should be a kingdom man, a kingdom woman. We're praying for revival, glory, uh, healing, deliverance. We're praying for God to do amazing things, not just with us, but with our children and our grandchildren. Proverbs 13, 22, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. So we're prophesying over our grandchildren, releasing the word of the Lord. We're not telling them it's going to end before you become an adult. I mean, if you were taught that, they almost told you not to go to college. Excuse me, not to go to school because you probably wouldn't even get married. And now you are having grandchildren. So be careful that you don't, under, you, you don't misunderstand what Jesus said when he said, the end shall come. He's talking about the end of that age, not the end of the world. The end of that age, the fulfillment of the old covenant age, then would come when the gospel would go out into all the known world, which it did according to Colossians chapter 1 and Romans chapter 10. Well, that's what I wanted to share today. Um, I may expand on it some more. I don't get too much into this subject because people really get riled up and um, all the religious demons go berserk when you hit any end time teaching. And I really don't have time to be battling with the beast of Ephesus. I just, I don't feel like fighting and battling the beast of Ephesus, the beast of America, wherever the beasts are, the religious beasts. They want to argue and fight all the time, yet they write all these books and give all these prophecies and nothing happens. And then they never see that maybe they could be wrong. Okay. God bless. Thank you so much for coming on. We'll pick it up tomorrow. Don't forget, tomorrow night, Tuesday night, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, part one of a new series called Witchcraft and the Occult, a new series I'm doing, a new master class. You need to register for it by going to jebiblestudy.com, jebiblestudy.com, and register. Look forward to uh, sharing uh, a, a several-part series 
on witchcraft in the occult. If you're involved in deliverance, you want to move in deliverance more, um, I encourage you to take this course because it really helps you to discern to help people that have come out of witchcraft in the occult to get them delivered. And also, if you've been exposed to it, to receive deliverance for yourself. Okay, I'm going to come off of Facebook Live. And um, by the way, thank you for sharing and thank you for giving. If you gave on Facebook Live, I forgot to mention it, by giving through the hearts and uh, next to the heart and uh, by giving through the stars, which is next to the heart and like button. I see a few of you did. Not a lot this morning. I forgot to mention it. You can still do that if you're watching the replay by clicking on the stars and giving that way. And of course, you can also give in Clubhouse by clicking on the link and giving at the giving addresses, including Zale, Zale at E-C-K-H-J-O-H-N at gmail.com. Uh, E-C-K-H-J-O-H-N at gmail.com. Well, thank you so much for tuning in today for sowing, giving, and as always, any party for commenting. Until you hear from me again, those on Facebook Live, thank you for sharing the broadcast. God bless you and double shalom. God bless.